Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good evening. This is Health Matters, your Tuesday evening Health Matter rendition. And remember, any of our shows that you have missed, please catch it on our YouTube channel. Over 100 shows. I think we've topped almost 200 shows for this past couple of years. Thank you so much for being the loyal follower as you are. And uh, remember, any of the shows that you have missed, follow Health Matters, uh, ITV Networks Health Matters on YouTube. If you have friends and family listening to us all over the world, they need to do it on www.itvnetworks.tv. Click on Listen Live or Live Stream, and then you can pick us up in any of our live shows if you're not on the DSTV bouquet. I'm Khawa Solomon. Please do stay with us for the next hour as we unpack coronavirus and the stigma attached to those that have tested positive. Yes, literally, they've been put into a category. There's so many, um, not just the lockdown that has, you know, effects on individuals, but those have te that have tested positive, sometimes even those that have gone for testing, um, or even if you cough, you'd be looked at finally. So today we discuss this and more. We have specialist psychologist in uh, clinical psychologist uh, online with us uh, will join us via Skype, Dr. Uh, Mbali. And uh, we will also be chatting to a representative of SADAX, the South African Depression and Anxiety Support uh, Group. And they'll be telling us what facilities they have available to all South Africans that need help during this time. But before we do that, let's play our video for today. And that is Fighting COVID-19 Stigma. Have, take a look. It's easy to become afraid during a disease outbreak, especially a pandemic. How can I catch it? Who already has it? How do I stay safe? How can I keep my family safe? Uncertainty can lead us to reject or to be afraid of people affected by COVID-19. It's normal that we feel worried. But sticking with the facts on how to prevent COVID-19 from spreading and what to do if you encounter symptoms is our best defense. Rejecting or fearing people can cause them to hide their symptoms. It discourages people from practicing preventive behaviors like wearing masks and physical distancing. It can even stop people from seeking health care. Ultimately, this means the disease is harder to diagnose, treat, and contain. So how can we overcome fear and stigma to help the fight against COVID-19? Words matter. Talk to and about people affected by the virus with respect. Spread the facts. Practice and share the recommendations endorsed by your health authorities. Be kind and look after each other. Check in on your family, friends and neighbors. Offer support where you can. Have you seen social stigma happening in your community? How did you respond? Tell us in the comments below. Welcome back. So let's now link up with our specialist clinical psychologist, Dr. Mbale, and uh, we find out more about what is going on around the stigma of COVID-19. So if you w would like to interact with us, uh, your questions answered before and after the show as well, any comments, questions and queries, we can sort of uh, look at in the following shows and their topics. But for this evening specifically, our psychologist will join us. So please do send through your comments, questions and queries. For now, let's join uh, Dr. Mbale. Very good evening to you, Doc. Good evening to you, Hoa. Thank you so and, much. And on your and on your bus. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Um, and hopefully your expertise will definitely guide us around the stigma. Just your comments on that video first. I, I like the video because of the words that they chose mm. to put on the video. It's very positive. Um, it focuses on what we want to see rather than what we don't want to see. Uh, the words that they use, the, I like the questions that were asked um, there is, how can I keep safe? You know, the, another question was, 
um, how can I keep my family safe? How can I stay safe? You know, it, it's it's better to ask those questions than to say who can give it to me. <laughs> you know, so we need to focus on how to because that's the only thing that we can kind of control. I know that maybe other people can say that uh, control is an illusion. It, it's impossible, but I think we can control what we can do. We can control our thoughts, we can control our emotions, and we can co also control our actions in terms of pre uh, protecting ourselves and protecting the, the loved ones. Even if we are, they are not our loved ones, just to, to, to protect our fellow citizens. So we know that knowledge is power. Please describe um, to your understanding so that everybody can also understand what the, the word stigma is all about, the definition. Okay. All right. Uh, the word stigma is a set of negative or often unfair beliefs that a society or group of people have about something or about someone. Or another, another person can say it's a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or, pe or person. We, we can have, we can see a physical stigma, especially against those people who are impaired or who have got physical impairments. Uh, there are also stigma around mental illness. Generally, there's also stigma, uh, uh, you know, around certain groups, or certain groups of people, maybe of certain origin. But when we talk about, um, uh, particularly the, the COVID-19, we usually people that are stigmatized are people that have tested positive or people who who seem to be displaying symptoms that we think. Uh, associated with COVID-19, as you said at the beginning, that when a person coughs, people start insulting and, and scolding you that, hey, uh, don't do that here, you know. Um, so we, 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 if a person sneezes, we used to say, bless you, but now we, we don't say bless you anymore. We want to run. <laughs> and so that, that's all part of kind of, of stigmatizing or, or disgracing a person that, um, that, 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 that we think is associated with, with COVID-19. We also stigmatize people that we think are from a region or are from regions where we we have heard or we suspect that maybe uh, in that area people who have got COVID-19 or they can spread it to us. So in other words, we are very fearful. Um, and then, then when a person then starts to internalize the, the actions or the, the, the thoughts or the beliefs from other people and they internalize it and they start feeling emotional about those um, thoughts of others then they start feeling a feeling i mean they start displaying feelings of shame mm. which is a highly unpleasant self-conscious emotion so in other words i become very self-conscious uh, as well i i just want to commend those people who have tested positive but they are able to show us videos of themselves. You know, they give us videos of over the, 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 the YouTube and, and the internet. They, they, they assure us that they are okay. And then we see them, you know, recovering, uh, being okay, people that we know. And, and it, it gives us a sense of comfort. And I, I believe that that is going to help, uh, help everybody in terms of not being afraid of them or, or, or you know, knowing that, we can get through this. Yes. So, so yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so often when people are uh, placed in a certain sort of context of stigma against the fact that they're coughing or they might be having the sniffles and then immediately you have symptoms. And, and there's also been talk around, you know, possibly uh, the Chinese that have been living maybe in South Africa for quite a while and saying, oh, no, they're Chinese, mm -hmm. so they're bringing the COVID-19 virus. So let's understand what results when it comes to, you know, stigmatizing people um, and, and, and causing, you know, distribute and, and possibly for that individual to feel shameful. Okay, oh, you mean, you're asking what causes the stigma? Yes, so they're often left with, um, you know, bad words and feeling really like their name is, is put out there that they're a bad person, as well as, you know, them oh. not feeling, uh, they, they feel ashamed. Okay. Um, the stigma and the disrepute hurts everyone. Uh, and it creates fear and anger uh, towards other people. Uh, because it's a result of stereotyping. 
and it, lead, it, it, it leads to discrimination and social avoidance and rejection. And people who are stigmatized, it's very difficult for them to, to get help, to even seek help, because now they become ashamed because they know that people fear them. So, and in, in extreme cases, we see even physical violence. We have had reports um, of um, people uh, who have been diagnosed with the, the virus, and we hear that what is happening to them is that they even leave their homes because people are trying to stone them. I think it, it's something that is people uh, uh, make it seem as if they are they've got leprosy or something like that, so they don't want to mix with them. They, they feel that even if they are just in the vicinity, um, then they, they, will, they will give them the, 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 you know, the virus. Uh, so what, what the effect that it has on the people that, that have the virus already is that now, even if I, I, I'm suspecting that I'm, I might have um, uh, uh, the virus, I will not go for tests because I'm scared that what if I test positive? Then I'm not going to have a home. I'm not going. I'm, I'm going to be isolated. I'm going to be rejected. And we all want to belong. And that is very self-defeating in terms of us curbing the the, the 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 spread of the coronavirus. Because now uh, these people will, will go into hiding. They are not going to test. They are not going to seek help. They are going to spread it without even knowing that they have it, or they will spread it knowing that they have it, but because they are, they don't want to be rejected, they don't want their children to be rejected, they don't want their families to be rejected. So, sort of so in other words, it, it, it doesn't help us. Yeah, and understanding these three, you know, terminologies, the, the stigma attached around, you know, being a positive COVID-19, and then this whole idea that we can't even get hold of a patient that's, that's possibly positive because then they would be categorized and um, sort of defamed in a way uh, by the public, friends mm -hmm. and family. Um, I believe there was even a case earlier, a couple of weeks ago, where uh, this gentleman had come from Dubai for a wedding, for a wedding here in South Africa. And he had apparently symptoms, but he had taken medication to suppress those symptoms. So maybe he had a fever and he took some paracetamol. Um, days later when, and, and through this, these symptoms as well, he visited family, friends, even went to a wedding. Um, and then when uh, he went to the doctor, in fact, and he never gave his, his, his correct contact details. So when the GP got his tests back, they found he was COVID positive, COVID, yeah, COVID-19 positive, but they couldn't get hold of him. Apparently, this doctor put it on Facebook, put it on social media, and eventually he found a relative. And when that relative said, yes, I know him, um, or yes, he's related to me, she was in fact ostracized, sent several ugly thousands, in fact, messages from family to say, how can you um, reveal my, who I am? This is a family sort of affair. It's private. And the family was quite upset yeah, with her. It, so we have to look at it on both sides. We have to look at it on both sides. That the, the, the people who, because he had tested before, and then he, before getting the results, then he went on to, to, to see family members. Because everybody is, is afraid and everybody has got this feeling of uncertainty, everything, everybody is scared not to, to get the virus. Therefore, on their side, we have to, to, to empathize with them in, in their fear as well. But um, we, we, we also have to look at, I mean, both of them that, this one thought that maybe he wasn't um, infectious in, in, in under under circumstances he should have known that he, he if he he is not he is still waiting for tests then he needs to isolate for some time and not go to others because if they find out or I mean he he is at the risk of infecting yeah not not it's not about them finding out but it's about him being at an infectious stage and therefore he should um, oh, um, isolate yeah. himself and not go out there. So in other words, that is part of the, 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 the stigma and the shame that I don't, I dare not, not tell. Even the, the point of hiding your details, it just shows that I'm, I'm, I'm uneducated here. I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. I think the knowledge, um, 
educating the public, educating the people yeah. will go a long way to, to, to decrease such behaviors. There we have it. Education. Find out more and more and more about uh, COVID-19 to uh, get rid of that fear of stigma. But we'll talk more just after the short break. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. This is Health Matters, your Tuesday evening slot between 8.30 and 9.30. Before we continue with our specialist uh, clinical psychologist, let's take a look at how to fight stigma. Hi, my name is Cassie and I'm 16 years old. I've seen on social media that the new coronavirus outbreak has provoked a lot of social stigma and discrimination. This is harmful to not only those who suffer from it, but for everyone. Stigma can isolate people. It can drive people to hide their illness to avoid discrimination and can even prevent them from seeking medical care. So it is very important to avoid stigmatizing people. And we can all do this. How? Basically, by understanding that words matter. Do talk about the new coronavirus, but don't attach locations or ethnicity to the disease. Do talk about people who have or may have COVID-19, people who died after contracting COVID-19, but don't refer to the people with the disease as COVID-19 cases or victims. Do talk about people acquiring or contracting COVID-19, but don't talk about people transmitting COVID-19, infecting others, or spreading the virus, as it implies intentional transmission and assigns blame. Do speak and share accurate information about risk from COVID-19, but don't repeat or share rumors that are not confirmed or language that spreads fear. Do talk positively and emphasize the effectiveness of preventative measures, such as hand washing, but don't emphasize or dwell on the negative or threatening messages. Most importantly, do good. Use your social media account to spread facts and solidarity. This will help us to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Thank you to the World Health Organization for providing content of that stigma, how to fight stigma. Do's and don'ts. Uh, Dr. Mbale, thank you so much. Welcome back. Your comments on that video. I very much agree with the, 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 the point, the do's and the don'ts that are said on the video. For example, uh, that we must spread information, correct information, not rumors, uh, not... Uh, uh, the, the hearsays, you know, we must rely on certain Facts. websites. I, mm. I I choose to stick with the Department of Health, South Africa, uh, the World Health Organization, as well as the CDC websites. Uh, for me, they, those are the most accurate ones. Mm. I, I Because I've seen that even in my own life, listening to, to too much news and to listening to too many videos and on all kinds of information, Leading and it's overwhelming and it leads to anxiety and it's very hurt. It's sometimes it can hurt. Um, and then I, I I agree with the the, the, the the slogan that says words matter. And then in terms of the words that how the words matter is how I say the words, the intensity of the words and the manner in which I say those words that I say. In other words, my words must not instill fear. I must not threaten people. And I must not label people, and I must not imply that there is uh, there are people who just go out there to just go and infect others. Uh, so I must say the words with love. I must be encouraging, and I must uh, emphasize protection and prevention. Um, and then I must also be part of the people who are encouraging solidarity. You know, the oneness. We are one, and 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 I must know that. The enemy is not the, the person that has uh, tested positive, uh, but the enemy is the virus itself. And, mm. and we must all protect each other and protect uh, ourselves. And whatever, if I, I feel like spreading something, I must spread the facts and yeah. not the rumors, no matter how, how I think they are funny or they are interesting. I, I'm allowed to share facts about people that have died, uh, the number of people that have uh, been infected, um, um, the people that have recovered, and the people that have died, 
um, yeah, but I must not spread what is going to be distracting to other people. So I do agree with everything that is, is on the video. So, so question just in, somebody wanting to know the difference between the stigma from the HIV patient to the COVID-19 patient. Um, the difference in stigma. Um, I, I would say that I, I've, I've had comments like, even HIV is better than COVID. Mm. Um, so in other words, uh, people feel that, uh, you know, with, with, with maybe with HIV, it was, the, I mean, I think it's because of the infection, the ways that, that one maybe would get infected with it. Maybe uh, people, or maybe it's because people are used to it. Uh, they, they know about um, HIV. It's something that we've lived with for um, for a long time, and and also because at least they, there was medication there uh, to 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 control it, to treat it. Um, but then when it comes to stigma around um, COVID, it's because it it it, it spreads through touchy through human touch, which is the way that we show love and, you know, the social intercourse mm. uh, between people. So I think then it, it makes people run away from you because they know that <laughs> by touching, I can get it. So I think it's worse. Mm. Maybe it, it, that's my opinion, but maybe I may be wrong. But, you know, understanding what HIV is and how it's spread is also a realization of people to inform themselves to not create that stigma um, around HIV specifically, because there's still people that are not educating themselves about how HIV is spread. And we know COVID is spread more interactively. Yeah, so, so there's, that, there's always that similarity when it comes to stigmatizing people. We stigmatize people because of ignorance. Hmm. Uh, we, we we don't seek knowledge and we we, we, we do seek information you know we, we you know information is is, is is all over but me getting information does not necessarily mean that I am getting knowledge mm. because it, it's an, it, knowledge is, is at another le another level of information I get information but when I I, I I look at the information and I understand it correctly, I, I, I mean, accurately, then it becomes knowledge. So if we give people information, we must make sure that we reach their level um, and, 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 and be able to explain, you know, that also, I, I think what, what, what we're not doing enough, maybe it, it, it's, it's explaining to people that, you know, the lockdown, for example, the lockdown is not aimed at harming anyone. It's aimed at, at, at flattening the curve, you know, things like that. Then people then just go and, and say, because we are under 50, for example, then we can meet. Whereas the 50 was only for funerals, you know. So people are very selective when they get the information. Okay. That's why I'm saying there's a difference between information and knowledge. Let's understand the effects of stigma and, you know, disreputes against someone and even causing shame to another. What, what are the consequences of those actions to the victim? The consequences of the, the first one is that uh, when I am I'm, I'm, I'm stigmatizing the, 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 the other person, they are going to be, it's going to lead to shame. It's gonna. It, it makes people uh, to be scared of seeking help. It, therefore, if they are scared of seeking help, then it means that they, they there's gonna be. Um, they're not going to receive uh, help, uh, and they, they might be denied healthcare, education, housing, or employment. Mm -hmm. uh, it we, they might we might even get you know, physically violent to them, or they may be physically violent to, to, to other people. Uh, it affects their mental health as well, because they now, there's now a uh, harp at this anger, because they are rejected. And it, it's not a very good feeling to be rejected, to be, you know, not, not to be part of what is going on around you. And then they, 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 they won't, they are not going to go for testing. Obviously, yeah. because even if they are feeling symptoms or even if they have tested, they are not going to go for the, which is what we saw during the times of HIV as well. That people would be maybe tested when they are pregnant because it was um, 
something that was a requirement, but they wouldn't go back for, for the results because they don't want to know, because they don't know maybe how to deal with it. Because as human beings, we like, or rather, let me just say, we enjoy and we thrive on social support. Mm. So if I can't get social support, I don't want anything that's going to uh, make me not to have social support. And if I'm going to be, I'm going to be self, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be isolated, mm. then I, I, I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be judged. So therefore, they don't, they're not going to go and, 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 and get tested. Or if they have been tested, they're not going to go f for, for, for getting their results. Yeah. So therefore, this will have a, a, a very bad effect on psychological adjustment and mm. interpersonal relationships, um, relationships generally. Let's talk yeah. about solutions and how community can stand together to help those COVID-19 patients, not just assist them, but be that mental support and strength for them as well during this trying time. We'll uh, connect with uh, SADAC just after this. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Our last few minutes of the show. Please stay with us and connect with your questions around stigma with our clinical uh, psychologist, Dr. Mbale. But before that, let's have a look at this story of a South Korean man who faced some stigma in his country. After full recovery from coronavirus, Professor Park is taking precautionary steps to maintain his health and protect the health of others around him. He avoids any kind of personal contact with people, as well as elevators or anything really that requires the push of a button. However, Park says his neighbors are afraid of him and recounts an incident that happened to his mother. But one of my neighbor was screaming that they actually, because of your son, all our family must be die. So that they, I can understand why they are doing because it's nervous. So I think they, I have to use stairs instead of the elevator to make them comfort. Park was quarantined for 23 days. It took him 10 more days to fully recover. And since then, he's twice tested negative for the disease. Regardless, Park says many people are still cautious around him. One of Park's co-workers says social behavior and interaction does change for those who have had the virus. Now we have to sit apart when we eat. We used to talk a lot too, maybe spit a little bit, and type on the same keyboard together. But now we're careful. We keep a certain distance between each other while working. Things are definitely different from before. While Park's colleagues fear his condition, despite the doctor saying he's healthy. And Park himself is not immune to concerns about second-time infections. Many people has been positive again after full recovery. It has been the one person last Friday in South Korea, three person again on Saturday. So it's continuous coming, so I would like to be careful as well. Reinfection hasn't yet been scientifically proven, but Park remains vigilant and hopes to be accepted once again by those around him. Samir Seifovich, TRT World. Thank you to uh, Turkish International News for pro providing us that story of Park and how it affected him, stigmatization. Let's now chat to a representative of SEDAC, and that is Venetia Gordon. Thank you so much, Venetia, for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. So talk to us about the services SEDAC does offer to South African citizens. So SEDAC is the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, and we've been running for the past 26 years providing counseling, containment, and referrals nationwide. We run the only national suicide crisis helpline, and most of our lines are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every single day of the year. We do various outreach projects. We, we deal with mental health, as, which includes anxiety, depression, and numerous other issues. We help people get help and get the correct support that they might need to cope. 
What is SADC's message now to South Africans during the lockdown? I think it's so important to know that it's okay to not feel okay in these trying times. Mm -hmm. It's so important to ask for help if you're not feeling okay, speak to someone, speak to family members, loved ones, friends, and keep that connection going. All right, let's look at how um, can one get in contact with SADAC. You've mentioned the operating hours is 24-7. Any other social pages or those that are only able to connect via the WhatsApp line? So we have a WhatsApp chat that goes from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day. We have an online counseling platform as well mm -hmm. where people can access a counselor from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day via the website, which is www.tadag.org. And there's also a 24-hour contact form if you want a counselor to call you back and an SMS service. Okay. And, and one three nine three. Okay. So we will post those numbers and details on our social pages as well. You can WhatsApp me for more details um, on that uh, connecting via SADAC. Let's just quickly talk about when visiting your website. It has it, it's quite busy, an enormous array of support there. Talk to us about the website when one is visiting and needing help. So I know it is a very busy website. Um, there's lots of information, lots of articles, lots of videos. We have put up tips and tools, a list of reliable resources where you can get the correct information regarding COVID-19 and other uh, mental health issues. With the videos, you can find coping with anxiety, dealing with depression. There's various, various um, videos from experts. Okay. And if you go onto our Facebook page, we have a daily Facebook chat where you can ask an expert any question based on the topics that we have put up. The counsellors or support staff that answers the call, what, what, what kind of support can they offer? Are they qualified to help individuals phoning in? So they have been trained and they are supervised and we have equipped them with the coping skills and necessary resources that okay. still are available in these trying times and they are constantly supervised, trained and helped with any uh, issues that, they, that come towards them. So Dr. Mbale, if I could bring you in here, SADAC is one of the biggest uh, support groups when it comes to mental health here in South Africa. Um, just give your message to the viewers of how useful that it can be during this time of lockdown. Yeah, during the time of lockdown when it's even difficult to go and see um, uh, other people or, I mean, where, 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 where one can get support and even sometimes other people are even uh, unable to go and see their own therapies. I, I really would encourage that people would pick up a, a phone a phone and, and do call the, the call center and receive that um, telehealth. Um, mm -hmm. uh, which is which would be very helpful when when one needs a lifeline because people can get into a panic at some point or people can after hearing you know seeing the numbers going up people do panic people do suffer from anxiety mm -hmm. uh, people sometimes they want some questions answered you know they want to know what to do so I feel, I, I I really support that they can go to Seda which is a which can be a lifeline for them. So coming back to you, Vanessa, tell us quickly about your support groups because they have it in various areas. Are they still operational during this lockdown? So we do have various support groups that are operational in at this point. So it's obviously all virtual and you still have to then call the call center to then get referred to a support group. So Dr. Mbale mentioned about telehealth. Is that available uh, via Skype or Zoom to connect with uh, counselors as well? So um, all of our phone calls are just telephonic counseling, okay. but we do have resources available with psychologists uh, and various doctors and counselors that are available and are willing to do Zoom sessions, Skype sessions, and other virtual therapy sessions. So for individuals sitting at home and might not necessarily, they understand mental health, they understand those that struggle, um, but they would like to assist SADAC in this case of the lockdown. How can others help that are at home? 
I think it's important to share the correct information, mm. to be there for your loved ones. Maybe go to the Facebook page and share it to your friends and to your family members that you might say, oh, you know what, maybe you're not having a good day. Um, maybe listen in on this video. Maybe watch one of the, the, the little videos that we put on or listen to any of the podcasts. So, Venetia, we need to wrap up with uh, yourself and uh, SADAC, South African National Depression and Anxiety Group. What is your message to viewers now? I think it's very important to know that even those that are not struggling with a mental health issue are feeling anxious, are feeling stressed. Mm. And if you do need someone to talk to, please do phone us and let us know so that we can try and help you in these kind times. Again, those uh, contact details and websites, Venetia. It's 0800 457 is 011-234-8387 is their 24 hour helpline. Thank you so much, uh, Venetia, and uh, all the best to SADC and the various volunteers all across South Africa. We appreciate uh, your time and uh, expertise during this time of lockdown. Thank you. That, so that was Venetia Gordon, Operations Manager for uh, SADC. So just looking at uh, that resource that we have uh, in South Africa, Dr. Mbali, and uh, often people are too scared to maybe phone in. I know teenagers, they, they can be quite uh, isolated. And it was lovely how the, the WHO presented that, um, you know, what, how to fight stigma, the do's and don'ts with a young lady. Yeah, that was very good because, you know, when when we are young and healthy and, and, and strong, we think that it's something for old people. Mm -hmm. This is not something that is, you know, when, 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 when COVID-19 was first reported, I, I, I don't want to lie to you. I thought it was something that was belonging to, you know, China, mm. <laughs> because I heard that the, the first cases were from there. But then as, as it started spreading, then one had to learn about mm. it and see that it, it's it's something that can hit home mm. at some point. Uh, so I am glad that they used a young person so that then even the young people can identify with the carer of the message and they can they can listen to it and it can resonate with them. So we need to know the impacts around stigmatizing individuals, the shame. I want to touch into that a bit more in our concluding segment. Please do stay with us, uh, Dr. Mbale. Remember, we're taking your questions, comments, and queries via our WhatsApp line. So please do interact with us and don't go anywhere. Okay. All right. Our last few minutes of the show, thank you so much for joining us and staying with us. We'll give you some important information and helplines, but before we do that, Dr. Mbali, we need to wrap up your concluding comments for today with regards to stigma around individuals who have COVID-19 and possibly, you know, just going around and coughing. Um, one of the things that... Okay. There's, there's, there's an echo. So. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Right. Uh, one of the things that I did not mention when we we're talking about uh, COVID and, and 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 HIV is that both um, those viruses um, attack the the immune system and therefore recovery depends on the strong immune system. Whereas if I'm stressed, therefore my immune system is is, is is compromised. Therefore, my recovery will take longer or I won't recover. So in other words, uh, it, it's, it's, it, there's that similarity again, which I did not mention, which I think is very important in terms of uh, the, the recovery process. Um, and then 
what, what I would like to say in my conclusion is that let us not be reactors, but let us be responders. And the difference between a person who reacts and a person who responds is that the, the person who reacts, we re, usually we react at an emotional level. Yeah. We react with emotions. We react impulsively. We don't think. Hmm. We, we get to a, a, a point where afterwards, after I've reacted, I, I, I've got... Re, um, uh, the, the regrets, uh, mm. sort of about that. Whereas, and then when you ask a person afterwards about the, the, the reaction, then they will say, I, I did not think about it, yeah. you know, or I had no choice. Mm. But I just want to say to people, we do have a choice. Between a stimulus and your response, there is a choice, and the mm. choice is to pause. Yeah. The choice is to think, to think about what you are about to do or what you are about to say. Let us grow up and, and be and be responders. Let us be people who are not going to be driven by worry and doubt or by fear or about anxieties or about the uh, I mean, driven by the the way that we used to react primitively. We are not being chased away by lions here. <laughs> this is a, a virus that is attacking um, all of us, which is our common enemy. So let us not turn to each other and, and look at each other as if we are enemies of each other. But what we need to do is to understand what, that there's one very important fact that I wish it can be drummed into all of our heads, that mm. the coronavirus cannot move. Only people move it. So the stay-at-home message, uh, uh, we still want to, to, to drum it into people's heads. It, yes. it, it will never be irrelevant. For me, that message will never be irrelevant. It will always be relevant that the virus does not move, but it's us that move it. So we can control our hands. We can control the, our, 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 our actions. And, and, and uh, let us get knowledge, hmm. you know, let us, when we get information, let us understand, if, we do, if I don't understand, there are, there are websites where I can go yes. and, and read more and understand more. Yeah. And let us be proactive, you know, in terms of knowing what to do if I meet up with a person, how to speak, yes. you know, the, the, the words to avoid, you know. So let us, let us be, let us be masters, let us be yeah. human beings. You know, let's all and, be and, human and spread love. Thank you so much, Dr. Mbale, for that uh, kind words. We appreciate your time again and your expertise. Do enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll chat again soon. Goodbye for now. There you have it, Dr. Mbale, and uh, she sort of explained how we need to be humane in every aspect. And a very important point: the virus doesn't move we move and spread it. So important telephone numbers, and you can also WhatsApp us as well if you've missed any of these numbers. It's doctors on call. Please call them for any questions around COVID-19 or support. 031 And somebody just sent now an Islamic care line for ladies, um, and they are uh, ex experienced counsellors to answer your call. 11 373 80 zero double one three seven three eighty eighty and there's a mobile number as well zero seven eight seven two seven one double three four remember you can whatsapp us for any of the videos information telephone numbers you have missed in this edition of health matters please do join us again tomorrow for health matters extra between 4 and 5 p.m enjoy the rest of your evening and please do stay at home wassalamu alaikum and goodbye for now